Everybody, welcome to Rana's Radar. Honestly, I love coming to these car shows because you never know who you're going to meet, and of course, it doesn't get better when it's a celebrity. I've got here with me Stacy David. How's it going? It's going great, great. Good to see you. I love to hear her talk, don't you guys? <laughs> <laughs> I get that a bit, and yeah, I'm like, yeah. you know what? I love the American accent. Oh, well, so that's awesome. <laughs> I do, I really do. But hey, you all know him from Gears. You know, I absolutely love your YouTube videos. Thank you. You guys are out there, you're building cars. I know you all are. Or in your mind you're building cars until you get all the materials and parts, but <laughs> your videos are so well done. They're instructionals, the way you speak, um, step by step, that even someone like me, and you know, I'm gonna be, <laughs> maybe I can do this, you know, that's the feeling that I get. Yeah, you can do it, that's the thing. We just try to show you the steps to be able to do it. So tell us, when did that start for you? You know, I, I started doing the shows in 98. I started doing a sh show called Trucks, and I did that for seven years. And then we started doing Gears after that. And the, one of the main reasons that I stopped doing Trucks was that it was just Trucks. Mm -hmm. And I'm into other things besides Trucks. So Gears, I can do anything. A matter of fact, one of the projects we just finished, you guys may have seen it, we took a zero-turn toolbox, or zero-turn mower, yes, and combined it with a toolbox <laughs> to make a zero-turn toolbox. And it's awesome. It actually works really well. <laughs> I did see that one, the lawnmower. And yeah. I, I was laughing and I said I loved it because it reminded me of the Redneck Rumble for starters. Oh, yeah, yeah. But you can just put a motor on anything with wheels yeah. and then just make it Which run. is what we do. And it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. And it's fun. And I love the way when you're talking about it, you're laughing, you're smiling, you're having oh, such a fun time. It, it is. And that's the thing that I try to remind people. You know, when you get into these cars and these shows, it's very easy to get into the high dollar cars. And that gets really serious. You know, when people are trying to win, you have a two or $300,000 car, you're trying to win a show, then it gets really serious. And it's easy for people to forget how fun this is. Yes. You know, and it's kind of like, you know, when I was, in, I was in the music business too, and if people forget to have fun with their music, it's not music anymore. Yes. It becomes a job. So we try to remind people to have fun with this stuff and get out there and work with your hands. I love it, absolutely <laughs> love it, honestly. Stacy, um, before the channel, before Giz and the TV, tell us a little bit of background. Yourself growing up, what was that like? Well, I was, I was a car guy from the very beginning. I mean, it was cars and guitars. Okay. Those are my two things. I mean, I played sports and I did all that stuff too, but the cars and the guitar stuff were always hand in hand. And it was funny because I moved to Nashville as a musician. And my dad was always like, you're working on those cars too much. Quit working on those cars. He was actually telling you to stop. He stopped working on the cars. And he <laughs> actually told me, he says, listen, you need to keep with that music because you need to have something to fall back on, your music. And I'm like, dad, I think it's the other, other way, way around. around. Wow. <laughs> so I used to hide the fact that I was working on cars all the wow. time because he was like, you're wasting time on those cars. Well, wow. now... You know, I talked to him, he goes, well, I always knew that you were going to do the car stuff. I always knew that. You were a car guy from the beginning. I was like, You yeah. knew it, Dad. You knew it, oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> After when I was breaking all of his drill bits and yeah. tearing up his cars. Yeah. So. But that's what you did. You just started off yourself. And yeah. what's interesting here is um, with our interviews that we've been watching, there's always someone, you know, that shows you dad or an uncle or an yeah. older brother. But in your case, you've just started experimenting yourself. I did. I, I was always into it, but I did have that one mentor. Okay. And he was, he went to high school with my dad. And dad at least had the wisdom, he, you know, he looked at me out there hacking on stuff in the garage and he was like, you know, this kid is really into this and I'm not into it, yeah. but I will send him to a friend of mine who is. Nice. And so I spent a few weeks with Jim Williamson and he was a master fabricator, mechanic, and he really opened my eyes. I was about 10 years old at the time. And I just cleaned up his shop. We were putting a motorcycle engine on a go-kart. <laughs> Crazy stuff. But he was doing things, back in the day, he was putting V8s into Jaguars, you know, things that nobody was doing. And I was like, for example, he had taken and put Corvette headlights into a D-type Jag, or into an E-type Jaguar. Okay. Which, at the time, was what people were doing. Yeah. Think about it now, it's like it's sacrilege. <laughs> but back then, and it looked terrible. Yeah. And I told him, I said, well, that looks awful. He goes, yeah, the customer wanted that. And he said, I'll just cut it out and just replace it. And I was like, you can do that? Yeah. He said, yeah. And I was like, I, that's what I want to know. <laughs> I want that freedom to be able to do whatever. And this that's is what... why I've, I had to come and talk to you because yeah. you know, you're talking and I'm like, 
That's the stuff that I've said. Yeah. You can actually do that. You can move this. You can change this. Nothing's impossible. Nothing's impossible. And that's the thing that I try to get. And so the shows, since day one when I started doing trucks, has been that to try to encourage people to like, listen, you may not have these skills right now, but you can do it. This is rocket science, and you can learn it. Because I did. Yeah. You know, if I can do it, anybody can do it. It just takes time. You know, and that's, that's the thing with the, with the YouTube generation. They'll watch a few videos like yes. on TIG welding yes. and then they'll go, well, I can TIG weld. It's like, no, you actually have to do it you actually have to, to learn to the it. skill. There is a skill involved. Wow. This so, is so yeah. fascinating, honestly. Um, I've let the cat out, out of the bag, you guys. Uh, I am going to be building a truck. And, <laughs> and every time I say it, I still laugh because, you know, I'm going to be way in over my head. I'm definitely going to have help. But the main point of my first project is going to be to learn. Yeah. How to do just start from the basics right into the complicated stuff yeah and and i say this if anything if it's nothing else at least you all will have a good laugh oh yeah that'll be great <laughs> watching thing, me <laughs> it is and we'll all because we've all been there yeah that's the thing that people forget yep. we have all been there because i have no filter if i don't yeah. know something you know me i'm going to ask it you know no oh, matter yeah. how dumb that question is yeah. and, and i'll be saying okay let's do it again just so yeah. i could learn it and know how to do but it see that's the best way to be that's how i was as a kid and still i'm always learning you're always still learning and if you ever stop you're done mm -hmm. and the thing is as a kid i would ask those questions I, in the shops that i was working at, i was like how do you do that and a lot of times they go ah you're a stupid kid i'm not going to tell you mm. and i would just Keep, keep asking, asking. and pretty asking. soon they go, okay, come here. I'm going <laughs> to show you a secret. Yeah. And so that has always been part of our shows, is to reveal those secrets. I was a big Bruce Lee fan. Okay. And see, Bruce Lee revealed all those martial arts secrets that were usually hidden. And to me, there was a lot of automotive secrets that I was growing up that these guys would show you, like how to use an English wheel, but nobody else would teach you. You had to be in that inner circle. No idea what that is. That's that. It's a it's a tool that actually helps you shape metal okay. and make compound curves in metal. Okay. So it's very very skill oriented, and it takes time to learn how to do one. And so, I wanted to learn that, and I wanted to be able to show that. But most people wouldn't teach that. So mm -hmm. that was kind of the purpose of the shows, is wow. to take that curtain away and let people go. Listen, you don't have to go to a mechanic. You can understand what the mechanic is doing. And even if you don't build your own car, at least you know how to not get ripped off. Yes. So if you take your vehicle to a body shop and you know how to paint a car, and a guy comes back and he goes, I can paint your car for $1,000, you're like, that's impossible. Mm -hmm. The paint alone is $5,000. Exactly. So I know you're, something's wrong here. Something's wrong here. Or they come back and say, we're going to paint your car for $30,000. And you're like, no, it shouldn't take that much. Yeah. Because I know what's involved in that. So. It's such a valuable skill, and it's such it's one of those skills that, as a race, it needs to continue. As yeah. for the human race, it needs to continue for oh, yeah. for us to be working on cars yeah. with our hands. Obviously, oh, yes. oh I think so. A hundred percent. That's why these yeah. car shows need to continue, yeah. and we need to get the next generation involved because machines are not the same. Yeah. And um, it's it's one of the things that I preach so much on this. You know, we've got to keep this going. We've got to keep the car shows alive. Yeah. And, your YouTube channel, yeah. you know, and as well as Gears, it's one of those things that's gonna be helping everybody out there. Whether they're young or old or just getting involved in this. Oh yeah. It's it's amazing. Love yeah. what you're doing, honestly. Thank you. We thank appreciate you. it so much. Well we love what you're doing too. Okay, yeah, well I, thank you. I've just started, so it's gonna be a lot of fun and um, yeah. it's gonna it's definitely gonna be a lot of fun, a lot of yeah. stuff to come. Forget about me. One, what is your favorite car? Oh my gosh. Do you have a favorite car or is it like a favorite custom that you've made yourself? You mean one that I've built? Yes, of course. Uh, they're all like your children, so you can't really pick a favorite. They all are special. We won't and, show them. And each one is, uh, <laughs> the Sergeant Rock truck has got a special place because it's historical. And I knew that truck when I was a child. I, I know the history of that truck clear back to World War II. You know, way before my time, but I know the whole history of the truck. And it represents our veterans and stuff, so it's very special to me. Uh, of course, there's Copperhead and Crazy Horse and all those. I mean, they're all, they're all special. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and then there's always the new ones you're working on. Yes. Because I get involved in the new ones, I'm all excited about those. Yes. So, you know, it's, you can't just pick one. Okay. But, well, uh, for someone with your uh, skills, is there a type or make that is easier to work on than um, the rest? easier to work on. I tell you what, the 
the, the hot rods and the uh, muscle cars and the trucks yep. are much easier to work on now because the aftermarket has stepped forward so much with parts. See, back when I was first starting, you had to get parts out of junkyards. Mm -hmm. You had to, you know, if you wanted to put a front subframe under something, you had to cut it out of a, a Camaro or a Nova or a Volare and, and graft it in there. And that took fabrication skill. Those days are gone. If you're still cutting, you know, front ends and stuff out of stuff, things like that, you don't need to. The aftermarket, you can go buy it. You can just buy and it. And it actually fits really well. So that has moved things forward to where it's easier for people to build mm -hmm. cars. Before this, if you had found it at a junkyard, then you would have had to do some kind of mod uh, modifications to it, welding it work to fix Abs it up. Absolutely. Okay. And, and to know how to make it fit. And mm -hmm. you have to have a jig and, oh, mm -hmm. there's all kinds of skill involved with that, where now these companies have done that work for you, where you can just kind of bolt it on. So it makes it easier. They're big jigsaw puzzles. You're not making the pieces of the puzzle anymore. Yeah. You're putting pieces together. But I still like to do the custom stuff where I'm making the own, my own pieces. Making your own pieces. Yeah. And that's what makes the vehicles unique. Yes. You know, you, where they're all different. Well, I, you know, yesterday at the first day, um, you guys saw it on Facebook as well. We went on that pontoon boat down the street. <laughs> you were on that. <laughs> I that's was funny. on that. Yeah. Those guys were amazing, honestly. Gary, I, it's not the only boat he's done, and he's probably going to keep me from mentioning it, but. He's um, got a jet boat, he's oh, yeah. turned it into a car, put an engine in it. Oh, yeah. But this pontoon boat had a 350. Of course. Of course, you know, why not? It was <laughs> a not? massive boat, it was so comfortable. Yeah. And um, when their friends had reached out to me and they said they want to do that, I said, yeah, I really want to do this, let's make it work because yeah. people love that. Yeah. A car is something that it draws attention. Yeah. That's why I like the rat rods. You know, I do like them. It doesn't yeah. have to be shiny and stuff. Yeah. It draws your attention, and once your attention is there, yeah. you learn about the car. And like you said, you learn about the history, or you learn about the personalization and what yeah. it means to that builder. Yes, and it's and it's personal involvement, and you can't get that. You you can't get that on this. No. It's not personal. You know, when you get out there and you can hear it and see it and smell it, yeah. and you can talk to the people and you see the scars on their hands and stuff. Yeah. That's real life. That's real life, you know, it's, which is why I've decided to actually get a project car and do that, you know, from the ground up because the other option was, and I'm not sure if I mentioned this, to see if I would do anything to my charger, you know, yeah. put maybe a bigger engine and stuff into it. And I thought, no, I'm not getting messy like that. Oh, oh you'll get messy doing a truck. I love that. Exactly, exactly. That's the whole point, you know. So, um, yeah, that's exactly why I've decided to go down that path and... It's not to say that I'm watching your videos and I'm going yeah. to know how to do it. God, no. Yeah. <laughs> now, you'll have to watch some of the shows, but some of the shows yeah. will take you into that. Okay. They're, okay. they're much more in depth, so. I have to do that. I have to get away from YouTube and actually watch the full shows. But, yeah. you know, this has been absolutely brilliant. I do appreciate this. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>